magnetic effect of electric current. Now here, how electric current can be generated through magnets. Now you must have done these experiments in your lower standards with iron filling and magnets. The iron fillings are kept on a white paper and we keep a bar magnet in between and we sprinkle iron fillings along the sides of the bar magnet and we tap it. After tapping, we find that the iron fillings arrange themselves in the form of the concentric circles which indicates the direction of magnetic field on a bar magnet. Now the magnetic field of the bar magnet influence the iron fillings due to which they behave like tiny magnets and hence they align themselves along the direction of the magnetic lines. Now these magnetic fields which are created from this electricity can also be transformed or it can be used and it starts to behave as electromagnet. So there is some relation between the magnetic field and the electric current so that we will be studying about in the magnetic field of electric current. Now to understand the magnetic effect of electric current we do an experiment. So what we do is we take copper wire and we attach it in a circuit. We also keep a plug key and we keep a magnetic needle which is adjacent to the our circuit. So now what we do is we open the tap key that is we are not allowing the current to pass and when you will observe this thing that is what will be the effect of magnetic needle then you will see that the magnetic needle doesn't move but as soon as you will close the tap key as soon as you start the current that time you will see that the magnet which was adjacent it moves it moves in the other direction here in the second picture you can see that so from this experiment we came to know that the magnetic effect is observed because of the current in the wire as the current was passing that is why the magnetic effect was observed and this means that electricity and magnetism they are closely related now this experiment was done by hans christian oersted and he told that the when a current passes through a metal wire the magnetic needle near the wire turns through a certain angle and by this we came to know the relation that there is some relation between the electricity and magnetism. Now to understand the magnetic fields which are produced around a conductor, we are taking a cardboard here and we have taken a circuit here. So we have to even apply the resistor, we have put an ammeter to check the current, we have put our battery and we have also put our plug key and this wire is passed through a cardboard sheet. Now here we have kept our magnetic needle and we have sprinkled some iron fillings on top of the cardboard. First we will observe what will happen when we pass the current to this magnetic needle and second what will happen to the iron fillings here. So first if we will take this magnetic needle away from this as uh, equipment then and we need to start the current when we take this away we will find that the magnetic needle in the compass it starts to deflate less when it is away and when we take this magnetic needle towards the circuit then we will see that the magnetic needle in the compass which is there it deflates more so from this we can know that the magnetic needle which is there that the strength of the magnetic needle and the strength of the magnetic field increases with increase in the strength of current. Even in the iron fillings, we can start the current with a low amount. So as low current is passed here, so we will find that the circle that is the iron fillings which are which we have sprinkled on the top of the cardboard sheet, they try to arrange themselves but they are not strong. But as you increase the current here, so when you will increase the current, you will find that the lines becomes much closer to it and you can easily see those fields. Here in this picture, you can see that how these concentric lines are formed around the cardboard. Here you may see. So this, is, this shows that as we increase the current, more amount of magnetic 
fields can be produced. So we can conclude from this experiment that the strength of the magnetic field depends on the strength of the current. The strength of the magnetic field will increase with the strength of current and will decrease with the strength of current. Next is the right hand thumb rule. Now how do we come to know the direction of the magnetic field? whether the magnetic field will be formed in this direction or in the opposite direction. So to find out the direction of magnetic field, we use the right hand thumb rule. So now we can uh, use this and we can find out the direction of magnetic field and the direction of the field which is produced by the current flowing in an electric conductor. So for this only we can find out. So what we have to do is we have to hold the conductor in your right hand. You have to point your thumb in the direction of the current. So here, where, in whichever direction the current is moving. So here the current is moving in the upward direction. So your thumb should go in that direction. And then you have to curl your fingers. You have to roll your fingers around the conductor. And the direction of your fingers is the direction of the magnetic lines of the force. So your fingers decides in which direction it is going in that direction the magnetic lines will be formed the lines that we saw in the earlier part that how lines are formed iron filling lines are formed that is the magnetic field lines which are formed the direction we can know by this right hand thumb rule now in the previous part we learned that how the magnetic fields are produced when you connect a straight conductor that is when you connect the wires in a straight line but here what will happen when you connect it in a loop so we will see that what will be the effect of magnetic field what will happen to the magnetic field when the current is passed through a circular loop so here we have a circular loop through the conducting wire and we have kept a cardboard now on this cardboard there are two points that is p and q so one part of the wire passes from p and the other part of the wire passes from q now what we have to do is we have to sprinkle some uh, iron fillings on top of this cardboard and we have to see the observation. So as you start the conductor that is as you start the current to flow. So what happens is that you will see that there the magnetic lines are starting to produce near these wires. So at P also we will find that some lines are produced. And at Q also we will find that some magnetic fields are produced. Now one thing you must have observed that as we go away from the wire, the concentric circles that are representing the magnetic fields, that is the magnetic lines of force, they become bigger and bigger. And when it is near, the magnetic lines are not that big. But as it goes away, the lines become bigger and bigger. Even at Q also you will see that the lines are becoming bigger and bigger. And at one point the lines become so big that we can see that a straight line is formed here. Here you can see a straight line is formed. So at some point we will see that the line that is the magnetic field it increases. The lines are increases, increasing so much that we see a straight line. So from this we can conclude two things. That is. The strength of the magnetic field for a circular loop, it depends on the current flowing through the wire, that is how much amount of current is flowing and the number of turns that is formed. The magnetic fields which are produced due to the current in a solenoid. So now solenoids, they when we uh, use a copper wire and when the copper wire with a resistive coating is wound or in a chain of loops like a spring so it is called as a solenoid now you may think where the solenoids are used so solenoids are most commonly used as electromagnets and they are the best examples of the electromagnets uh, sometimes they can also be used to slow the flow of electricity in the circuit and sometimes they are also called as inductor now these solenoids they produce the magnetic field same as the bar magnet. If you must have seen a bar magnet, so the bar magnet even has south and the north pole and the magnetic fields which are produced, it is produced around the bar magnet. So it is somewhat same to a bar magnet. Here also we have a north pole and we also have a south pole. 
Now, when you connect it to a battery and a plug key, so you will find that the magnetic fields starts to produce. Now, only difference between a bar magnet and a solenoid is that the magnetic fields which are produced in the solenoid, the inner field which are there, they are parallel to each other. Now, these are parallel. This means that the intensity of the magnetic field within the solenoid is uniform everywhere. That is, the magnetic field is of the solenoid is uniform. You will see that everyone will be uniform. All the fields that is formed is all uniform to each other. And this is the reason the solenoids are sometimes even used in the door locking system which use as an electromagnet and these offer a very secure closure. Next is the force acting on current carrying conductors in a magnetic field. That is we need to find out that the direction of force depends on what. So for this we will do an experiment that is we will take two stands. One on the one stand we will attach a horseshoe magnet and on the other stand we have to take a copper wire. So here you can see that from point A that is from top point till here we have attached a copper wire. And we will observe that what will happen when the current is flown through this. What will happen to this copper wire? What does uh, the current does and in which direction it will go? So that you will be finding out from this experiment. So first of all, in the first case, when the current is not flowing, that is the plug key is not switched on. So when the current is not flowing, this is the first thing that will be there. That is, this is the point A. The wire will be at point A. This is how we have attached the wire. So first, the wire is at point A. It is straight. In the second, we will start the current. Now here the current is flowing from top to bottom. That is from here to here. So when the current is flowing from top to bottom, we will see that the wire bends and it comes towards point C. This is the point C. And when we reverse the direction of current now the current we are trying to flow it from bottom to the top and when we try to flow the current from bottom to the top we will find that the wire which is there it has bent it towards b point so that means the because of the current the wire is changing now as the wire is changing so from this we can understand that the direction of the force on the wire is perpendicular to both the magnetic field and the direction of the current. So it depends on both the magnetic field also and also the direction of current. When you will rotate this magnet that is now it is in north and south you can even keep it in south and north direction then also you can observe the changes that is formed. So from this we came to know that the direction of the force on the wire was perpendicular to the both magnetic field also and to the direction of the current also. So from this we can conclude that the direction of the force depends on both the direction of the current and the direction of the magnetic field. So we know that there is a force which is there in the conductor. We know that there should be a direction of the magnetic field and we also know that there should be the direction of the current. But how we will come to know that what in which way the conductor will should the force will be applied or in which way the magnetic field should be formed or in which direction the current should flow. So this can be resolved through Fleming's left hand rule. So with this rule, we can use this rule to find the direction of force on the conductor. So according to this rule, what you have to do is you have to take your left hand and uh, the left hand thumb, your index finger and your middle finger. And all these three fingers, it should be stretched in such a way that they are perpendicular to each other. Now, the index finger is the direction of the magnetic field. And your middle finger is the point that is the direction of the current. And your thumb which is there, it is the direction of the force on the conductor. So through this, you can find out that in which direction things are happening like here if you will see so in the second picture 
this is the force of the conductor here is the direction of the magnetic field and here is the direction of the current so through this that is through your thumb your index finger and your middle finger we can find out that where the current is flowing in which direction the current is flowing the direction of magnetic field will be what and what will be the force of the conductor in which direction